Let's take a look at our first conditional branch instruction, which is called branch if equal. What a conditional branch is, is an instruction that will either branch or not branch based upon a condition code register flag. Okay? When I say branch, what that means is change the program counter. So you've done a con an unconditional branch called branch always. That instruction changed the value of the program counter. Absolutely. It would take it, the operand, and it would say load that puppy into the program counter. A conditional branch says half one time in one condition, I will update the program counter with the operand. But there is another condition which I will not update the program counter. Now, if you think about this, we could have an instruction that sits in memory, which would be called branch if equal. What branch if equal means is branch if equal to zero. How do I know if a, an operation resulted in a zero? Well, the thing in our, mem in our system that tracks zeros is the condition code register flags. So when I look at this, all of my branch if equals, all of my conditional branches, look at the NZVC flags in the condition code register. When I say branch if equal, it always comes after an ALU operation. So you would insert that instruction after an instruction like this, ADD underscore AB. So you had put information into register A, register B, you added them, and you wanted to say if the sum was a zero, then I'm going to branch. Okay? Now, when I say branch, let's just, let's just go all the way up and put a whole program together. And let's say that I did load A with direct from, what's our input port? F0. And then I did load B direct with F1. And then I added them, and I branched if equal. So I'm going to do this, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If I want this program to repeat if these were equal, what I could do is branch if equal up to zero. If it branches, okay, it will then take the program counter and go back up to there. However, if it does not branch, what it does is it simply goes to the next instruction in memory. So I might have something down here called uh, load a direct with whatever, F2. So the, the two conditions that you might have are, if it branches, it actually sets the program counter. If it does not, it will simply continue onward throughout the program. So what you need to do as the designer of this is you need to have a decision in the state diagram for this instruction that says, I need to go look at the Z flag in this condition, and if it's asserted, I need to load something into the program count. If it is not asserted, I will simply increment the program counter like usual and continue executing code. So this right here would be no branch. This is called a conditional branch because you branch based upon a condition. The conditions are always flags in the condition code register. So what you see is you have four different flags, four different things that track operations. They're all ALU operations. As a result, you can start having branches that are based upon all of those different flags. So when you take a look at the number of instructions that you could possibly have that are called conditional, you would have two for the N, Two for, you know, two for Z, two for B, and two for C. So you could actually have these conditional branches for each of these different flags. Okay? All right. So let's take a look now at, well, here's, here's what they would look like. If I look at my branches, I can have branch if N is equal to 1 or 0, Z is equal to 1 or 0, V is equal to 1 or 0, C is equal to 1 or 0. And they all have different mnemonics, but it's eight different conditional branches. 
The cool thing about conditional branches is it seems daunting. It's like, holy cow, this is a lot of stuff. Well, you know what? All you got to do is copy and paste them because they're almost identical instructions. The only difference is you look at a different flag and a different flag value. Okay? All right, so let's do an example <clears throat> where we are going to walk through an instruction where the Z flag has been asserted. So you added two numbers together, 0 plus 0 or whatever, you know, something that resulted in the value being 0. So you added 156 plus 100. The result was 1. You had a carry, but the result was 0 that ended up in, in the output of the ALU. It triggered or it asserted the Z flag. It went ahead and said, hey, grab it in the condition code register. I now want to branch. Okay? So think about what we are going to do. Our first states, fetch 0, fetch 1, and fetch 2, do absolutely nothing but do what? They go out and they grab the op code. All that did is it said, look, I'm going to go out and I'm going to say, I'm going to grab the op code for this fella right here and I'm going to put it in the instruction register. Okay? All right. Now, when I do that, the op code, you might wonder, is going to be 2, 3. Okay? So this is actually 2, 3. So when I do these instructions, at the end, I get 2, 3. Okay? And in this example, let's go ahead and get the program counter pointing exactly where it needs to be. So I start this instruction. Program counter is 5. It is loaded into MAR. And I go, I read the instruction, I put it into a instruction register, I increment the program counter, which is going to be 6, and now I sit and say, let's take a second and think about what we want to do. We are now at the point where I can do two different things. This now becomes a state diagram for branch if equal, branch if equal to 0. The way I did it is I decided to break it into two paths. Because you really have two things that could happen. The first thing that could happen is you have a branch if equal instruction and the Z flag was 1. The other condition could be you have a branch if equal and the Z flag was 0. If the Z flag was 0, what that means is you are not going to branch. In fact, you will do very little. You will simply go on here and continue on your way. If that is equal to 0, what do you do? Your program counter is at 6. You're not, gonna grab, you're not even going to read the operand. All you do is simply increment the program counter, and you're on your way. That's the end of the instruction. Very simple. You did not branch. If you do branch, what are you going to do? You will take another path that corresponds to the z equal to 1, and you will say, in this situation, I'm going to branch. I need to go read the operand and put it into the program counter. This becomes the identical in functionality to the branch always. I need to go out and read into mar. That's this state right here. I give it a second to go ahead and let the memory system respond. This is where typical instructions have an increment program counter. I don't want to increment the program counter because I'm going to blow it away in the next state. Then what I do is I say, look, go ahead and wait for this op code, or excuse me, operand to come back. So here comes 0, 0, and it's coming back. And what I can do now is I can say it's coming back in. I need to get that puppy into program counter. So I simply do a PC load, and now I'm done. That is a branch if equal to 0. It's a conditional branch, and everything is good to go. If you looked at that really briefly on a timing diagram, now in this timing diagram, we'll take a look at the addresses might be a little bit different. But what I want to do is take a look at how this worked. Number one, you're going to do fetch 0, 1, 2, decode. All you did in that state was go ahead and grab the instruction code, the op code. Now I'm going to take a situation, and for this example, z is going to be equal to 1, so I am going to branch. What I will do is go read the op arand, which is located at address 6. That took me a state and a state to get that into the mar. 
And then what I did is I went out and read that and ultimately loaded that value, which in this example was 0, 0, into the program counter. It looked very similar to a branch always. You went out, read the operand, put it into program counter using a PC load. Absolutely straightforward. Now, what would happen if I did not branch? So in this situation, this is an example where z is equal to 0. Exact same instruction. The only difference here is that the z flag was 0. So instead of reading the operand, I'm just going to go ahead and increment the program counter, and I'm on my way. Again, of course you're reading fetch 0, fetch 1, fetch 2, decode. That, all it did was go put the program counter address onto the MAR and go read the opcode. I then am sitting where my program counter is pointing to the next location of memory, but I don't really care. Because in this situation, I am not going to branch. I am going to go to the next instruction in memory, so I simply throw a PC ink and I'm on my way. I didn't even read the operand. Okay? Once you implement this type of instruction, this type of conditional branch, if you think about it, what is the instruction going to look like if I want to now implement branch if not equal to zero? Copy, paste, change the flag condition on whether or not you branch or not. Now you've got a full two instructions that look at the Z flag. Now what if you want to have two instructions that look at the N flag? Copy, paste, 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 and ultimately you'll have eight conditional branches. Now, you say to yourself, how do I test that? How would I test it? Well, what I want to do, if I want to test whether it's going to branch, I need to do an instruction that sets the Z flag. So if I want to do that, the only one that you have going into this instruction is add. Okay? But your condition code register should be set up correctly. So you want to add two numbers together that will equal a zero. Zero plus zero will work. Or if you had something that the sum was zero and you had a carry, so it's an 8-bit value, so the highest it can take on is 255, so add 255 plus 1. The result was supposed to be 256, but it doesn't fit, so you get a zero on the sum and you get a carry. But you don't care because all you're looking at is the Z flag. So what you should do, add two numbers, then test your branch if equal, and then add two different numbers and test your branch if equal. You want to test that it can branch if the result was a zero, and you want to test whether it doesn't branch if the result was not zero. Okay, and that is a branch if equal to zero instruction.